Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Robin, that's me, cause this is, this is my booktube channel. Anyway, I am here in my uh, Owenstown merch. You know, come join the cult community over there. It's a fun time. But that's not why I'm here today. I'm not here to do promo for um, Owenstown. <laughs> I'm here because I'm gonna start reading some Emily Henry. I have these two books. Clearly, they're in my hand. Um, I have People You Meet on Vacation and Happy Place. I was gifted both of these. But I also was like, you know, Emily Henry's coming out with something new. Why don't I just give her a whirl? See if she's also going to be an auto by author. I've done this with Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I've done this with Tia Williams. I'll link both of those videos down below if you're interested in watching them. And so now I think it's time I do it with um, Emily Henry. I read Beach Read last year. I think it was last year. And I had a good time. Maybe it was the year before. Anyway, it doesn't matter when I read it. I read it. <laughs> I had a good time. Um, I was not necessarily there for the romance between Gus and January. It was priority B, whereas priority A for me was whether January was gonna get through her grief with her dad and reconcile her feelings about things and who he was as a person and blah, blah, blah. That's what I was here for. So I'm curious to see if her other books are kind of similar to that where um, there is a romance because these are romances and but there's also like side things happening with characters and you know will I be interested in that as well as what's going on in these relationships. I'm hoping that I like the relationships more but that being said, I'm going to read People We Meet on Vacation. I'm going to read Happy Place. And I've already pre-ordered Funny Story, so it's on its way to me. Oh, we've got a guest. He was pawing at my leg and being very needy today. Anyway, um, I've got Funny Story on its way to me. And so we're just going to get in, read some things, decide if if we like Emily Henry. Blair, what do you think? Do you think you're gonna like it? We can't actually read. So I'm gonna get started on Happy Place. I have it on audio, and which is great because my house is in shambles and I need to go clean. And so I'll have something to listen to while I clean, get my house in order, listen to what could potentially be my next five-star read. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's not gonna be my next five-star read. I think Happy Place is about a couple who are together, were together, but they broke up and so now they're pretending to be together again for um, for their friends. I'm not sure. I've read a book similar to this before, um, similar to like this premise of having to pretend that you're still together even though you're not. And I can't say that I had a good time with it. So I'm hoping that maybe this time will be different. And then I hope that I discover that Emily Henry is someone that I am going to keep reading from maybe auto buying. That's my hope for this vlog. So let's go along on this journey. Let's start cleaning this filthy house and start listening to Happy Place. Hello, it's time for an update. It's time for an update. And let me tell you about this update. We're gonna be talking about Happy Place, the entire thing, because when I was going through all of my SD cards trying to like import clips or whatever, I was like, I know I filmed about Happy Place. I know because I complained <laughs> in one of the clips and I can't find that footage anywhere. And I thought, do I just scrap it? Do I not talk about this at all? I can't, I can't do that. I've got to talk about this. I'm just going to do it a one and done. So let's just, let's just get into happy place. First off, I started this on audio. Big mistake, huge. I've learned my lesson. I have learned that listening to Emily Henry is not for me. Okay. I've got to read her with my eyeballs because I, I think having someone else's voice, um, and interpretation and inflections on stuff just doesn't do it for me and so I need to just do it myself in my head. I mean I've got all the other voices <laughs> why not add in these characters as well. So this is what we've got going on. We have Wynne and we have um, Harriet. Wynne and Harriet 
are a couple in a larger friend group. There's like six friends in this friend group. Everyone's kind of coupled off. And originally there were three friends and then it grew into a larger uh, group. But Harriet and Wynn have connected and they're like together, except that they're not. Nobody else in the friend group knows this because they don't want to tell them because they like, we don't want to fracture this friend group. We don't want our friends to have to choose whose side they're going to take, whose friend they're going to be. Like, let's just figure this out for a second before we tell them that we're broken up. But they've been broken up for five months. Like, get it together, y'all. Even though they're broken up, living apart, doing their own lives, Harriet is in one place being a doctor. Uh, Wynn is in another place kind of taking care of his mother. His father has passed away, and so he's, like, taking care of the farm <laughs> i feel like he's on the farm um and so living separate lives haven't been in communication there's this one place that they keep going back to in maine they gone there for years with their friend group it is harriet's happy place it's the place she remembers being the happiest with all of her friends and just living in the moment and having the best time of her life except this year, when her friends request her to go to the cabin in Maine, she's like, oh, well, I can't go with Wynn, so I'll just say, like, he's working or something. And then she gets there, and who's there? Wynn. So their friend Sabrina has requested that everybody gather at the cabin because it is about to be sold off, and they just want to have one last hurrah at the cabin. But, like, nobody obviously knows that Wynn and Harriet aren't together. So they all get there, Harriet gets there. And who does she see? Wynn. And she's like, why the fuck are you here, my guy? And he's like, and so they have to pretend that they are still together so that they don't ruin this week with their friends. And then Sabrina surprises all of them by saying, hey, me and Parth, which is her person that she's connected to in the group, we're gonna get married at the end of this week and we want everyone to be here. So now they really have to keep up the charade because you can't just ruin a trip like this. Like you can't, it was one thing to just kind of ruin a vacation, but now you're gonna ruin a wedding by saying we're not together anymore and bring the mood down. You're not gonna do that. So they have to pretend that they're together and like stay in this one room. They get into all these little shenanigans that put them in forced proximity to each other. You're going back and forth in time seeing the little things that led up to them deciding to not be together. That's what happy place is, except for Harriet, it's not so happy <laughs> right now because she's with Wynn. Here's the thing, again, with Emily Henry, this is how I felt with Beach Read. I did not care much about Harriet and Wynn being together. In fact, Wynn, dry toast, like no seasoned chicken, just bland. He's the blandest Emily Henry boyfriend I can remember. His only personality trait is being boring and knowing that he's boring and thinking that no one wants to be around him because he's boring. That is his personality trait. That's the only thing he talks about. And it's like, oh my God, like how do we get you a little self-esteem? How do we get you a little self-love here, Wynn? Because this cannot be the only thing you talk about all the time. He's always like, oh, I just figured you would be better with somebody else that was more. And it was just like, Please. He's like, I don't do anything. I, I've always been boring and I don't have blah, 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 blah. And it's like, oh my God, you're, you are really boring. And even everything that he was going through, because those are mostly the parts that I enjoy about Emily Henry's books is like the stuff that's going on outside of it. You know, what the two love interests have going on in their lives. I didn't care about what was going on with Wynn. I'm going to be so honest. I know that he was having some life troubles and I was just like, mm, so sorry for you. Um, Harriet, on the other hand, I did not care so much about like her issues with Wynn, but she was having like friend issues and that, that I was like, okay, there were friend issues happening in this group. The three main girls, um, Sabrina, Harriet, and Cleo, I think, have been friends since um, college. And so as you get older, you know, friendships start to shift, people's priorities change, you start moving across the country, you now you've got time zones to contend with. It can be hard trying to, to maintain the friendships that you have when you're creating brand new lives for yourself. And so there's some friend tension in the group there. But like, I was just thinking if the friends had actually talked to each other at any point, at any point, some of the tension 
might not have been there. Like everyone was just pretending to be happy and for the sake of the others, but there was always like this underlying tension with everyone. And it was like, no one's gonna address this. No one's gonna be like, you're a little snappy today. Why are you being a bitch? Um, nope, no one until it all comes to a head and then they've all got to talk about it. I can't say that happy place was my happy place. It may be the least favorite that I have read from. I would give this like a solid 3.5 because it wasn't the worst. Like again, it's not the worst thing I've ever read. It was like a solid 3.5. The friendship stuff I really resonated with. Um, even some of the things that was going on with in Harriet's life where she was just like not sure about her path in life and what she wanted to do and just trying to feel more secure within herself. I, I could see that, I could get that. I will say I had a fun time watching Wynn and Harriet have to like pretend to still be a couple in front of their friends um, because you could just see like, you knew how awkward it was, but you could also feel like the tension between them, like knowing that they still had feelings for each other and there are things that were unspoken and that they needed to talk about, but like they still had love for each other. Like that was fun to watch. Everything else, not so much. <laughs> Wynn was really the only big downfall for me because he was just, he was just a big loaf of white bread. And I was like, wow, bored. And that's, that's Happy Place. Glad I read it. I mean, I said I was going to read it for this vlog. And so there we are. That's, that's the update. And now back to the regularly scheduled content. I feel like... I'm either always sitting right here or I'm in my car to give some kind of an update. And I don't really know what that means. Like, do I need to go more places? No, that's not what it means. I don't really want to be out in the world more. Anyway, we're going to continue on reading more Emily Henry. I'm going to finally pick up People We Meet on Vacation. I meant to pick this up a few days ago and then I didn't. So here we are. And I'm about to hop on Ashley's Sprints and hopefully do some reading because the night before we were on just a sprint and no reading was had i should have known but i came prepared just in case so i'm going to start this what is people we meet on vacation i don't know it's about the people that we meet when we vacation do y'all meet people when you go on vacation because i don't here's a question do you have like vacation friends and then non-vacation friends like friends that you know you can go on vacation with and then friends like you love them dearly but you know you can't spend more than about 14 hours with them because one or both of you would just die perish i don't know why i was thinking about that anyway let's talk about people we meet on vacation i think that this is friends to lovers i, I just want to go in blind fully uh let's let the story unfold as it will so I am still on sprints with Ashley. We've got like 20 minutes left in our sprint, but I've just gotten to the point where I was like, oh, I think I can get here tonight, which was page 54. I made it, I did it. I'm having a very good time with people we meet on vacation. Dare I try to say and predict that this could be a five star? I don't know, I just, something about it just feels so light and airy and even though I know that there's a heaviness because the two people, um, Poppy and Alex, are not friends right now, I just don't know. I'm curious how I'm going to feel about the romance because I usually have loved all of the other aspects of an Emily Henry book except for the romance. Like, I don't hate it, but I just don't care about it as much. Um, and so I like Poppy and Alex as friends. I love seeing how their friendship started, how it evolved. And I'm just like, I feel like they would be great as a couple, but also would I care if they were a couple? I don't know. Okay. So let's, let's talk about what's happening. So Poppy, Alex, they have been friends since college. And then something happens on a trip that happens two years prior to like present day in the book. I don't know what has happened on that trip yet or, you know, what fight that they had. Obviously, I'm sure we'll get to know sooner or later. So they haven't talked for two years and out of the blue, Poppy messages Alex accidentally and it's just like, hey, 
She's so embarrassed by it, which I can understand because when you haven't talked to somebody in a very long time and then you're trying to think of like the perfect opener and you're just like, hey, come on. But it starts them on this path to dialoguing and having like these sporadic conversations with each other. We've gotten to the point where Poppy has um, gotten up some courage to ask Alex, hey, do you want to go on another trip? And that's kind of where I am. Not too much has happened, but you've gotten a lot of history. You kind of have a little bit of foundation for who they are as people, how they interact in their friendship. I'm just having a good time. I am having a good hee-haw because they're just, something about Emily Henry's banter between people makes me laugh. And it's not like it's the best writing in the whole world, but it just, it does something for me. But I'm hoping to read more of this tomorrow because I am intrigued. I am just, I'm enamored with the two of them separately as friends and I'm very very interested to see if I'm going to like them as a couple. afternoon actually because morning has come and gone it's another glorious day here in the 70s I cannot tell you how happy I am that it's in the 70s finally although how long it'll be in the 70s I don't know but I hope it's long enough but anyway you're not here to hear me go on about how much I love lovely weather any who's it's, which you are here for, is an update on how this is going. Whoa. Not me slapping myself in the face. Any who's it's. Wow. Self on self crying. So I'm almost like halfway done with this. I have to tell you, I'm just having such a good time with this. For sure. Poppy, Alex. I love them both. I love their friendship and I realized pretty early on that the chapters alternate between present and like past but it's not the same past so they've been going on these trips for like I don't know 10 years I think was like the furthest and so it's like this summer, 10 summers ago, this summer, 9 summers ago so we're counting down to that fateful summer trip that they took and seeing what really happened and I'm just like anticipating finding out what happened what went wrong you can really see like how close they are and how much they really do care for each other you can even see like how this would develop into a really great relationship for the both of them and i just i want them to get together i know they will probably i'm enjoying going down memory lane with them seeing how they are building this friendship how they have these inside jokes that are only for them and how they just take care of each other even in the smallest of ways but also I'm really interested in seeing like how they're trying to repair this friendship how they're trying to come back from it um, and how hard it can be like you can't just jump back into a relationship whether that's a friendship a familial relationship you can't just jump back in without there being some moments of awkwardness trying to figure out where you fit back in especially after it's been such a lull I think two years and people are different things have happened in people's lives and that's the case here where things have happened to Alex or happened to Poppy and the other didn't know about it because they weren't really talking and so they're like mentioning it in passing and it's just like oh that that happened that's such a pivotal thing in your life and you didn't pick up the phone to call me you didn't tell me like I didn't know and it's not because like I hate you or anything it was just we weren't talking. See them rekindling their their friendship. And then you get the past where it's like a full-blown friendship and you just love every minute of it. I'm currently, I don't know if you can see, I'm currently 
on patron sprints with Jess. She's doing um, some daytime sprints. It's me, Jess, and Bree. And we're, we're getting stuff done. Now, am I getting this book done? No, because I don't have the audiobook for it. Also, I wouldn't want the audiobook for it because I just want to read it with my eyes. Also, because I've been tabbing this up and I just, there's quotes that I like, just moments where I'm just squealing and just so happy or have a very strong emotion. Also, there are these blue tabs in here because there's one thing that's irritating me and that is that the size difference is mentioned and something about that is just so grating she's just like he's so big and i'm so little and it's just like oh my gosh must we mention this like we get it we understand the size difference we don't have to talk about it. she's like he takes his big hand and paws my tiny one we get it there's a size difference he's six four and you're itty bitty five two we get it relax so i have started tapping up every time it's mentioned because it's just that grates on my nerves. But other than that, I'm having a great experience. We've been in this office a lot lately. Later? We've been in this office a lot lately. I am really getting work done. Um, work has really been working. And so that's why I've been in here. Because I need all the things that I... I I'm, I'm super crooked. I, it's bothering me. Is that any better? Who knows? Anyway. Um, last night I stayed up past my bedtime, which is a smooth 11.30, but I stayed up until not too late, until like maybe one, so I could finish the people we meet on vacation. I'm going to give this five on Goodreads because, you know, there's no partial star ratings. I would say for me, this is like a 4.5, maybe a 4.75. I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like I can't give it a full five. I don't know why I feel that way. <laughs> I don't know why I feel that way. Maybe it is a full five in my heart. You know what? I'm just going to say this is a five star read for me. You know what's also crazy? This is a five star read. And I think my other five star of the year was a love song for Ricky Wilde. And I don't know what it is about romances right now. Uh, but it's really doing it for me. And not all romances. I don't even know if I've read a lot of romance. This is all over the place. Let me get back to the point of why we were here. We are here to talk about this and my overall feelings and thoughts about it. Well, I really had a fantastic, fantastic time with this. I don't know, I don't read a lot of friends to lovers. So I don't know if like that's a th of my thing. But this one really did it for me because it was more like friends to lovers to acquaintances, back to friends, and then lovers. Like it, it just, it just circled the whole thing. Um, and I just really loved seeing them both in their element as like just friends in general, and also like the buddiness of <laughs> of their romantic feelings. While you mostly only see it through Poppy's eyes because there's not um, multiple perspectives in this, which I don't mind. But Alex um, articulates his thoughts and feelings pretty well. I mean, not throughout the whole thing, honestly, but you know, when it when it was necessary, he articulated very well and said what he needed to say. And I like how he had moments where he was like, I need space and I need time to think. And like, I'm not just going to go with the flow because that would, that would work for us right now. And we're in this euphoric moment. I need time to process. I need time to think. And I, I just loved it. You know what? Here's my thing. And I was thinking about this last night. I think I said earlier in this vlog that I never truly care about the relationship aspect of Emily Henry's books. <laughs> like, cool, they're there, but like, I'm here for the other stuff. Um, and while I was here for the relationship here, mostly because it was a friendship that developed first, I think the problem is that I never care about the men. The men are always so lackluster. Wynn was getting on my nerves because he was just so like, I'm boring and no one likes me because I'm a boring, boring. And it was like, yes, you are. You have no personality outside of complaining about how boring you are. That's absolutely true. Alex is also boring, but I feel like 
boring is his personality like he's just like I'm not a fun time guy I like to have a routine I like to do just straight and narrow things I don't like to do too much but that worked for Alex and then Gus guy I think that was his name from Beach Read Gus was his personality was just like I'm a brooding artist dude who's hurt and that that was his personality not my favorite other personalities but Alex I can rock with it because Alex felt like a person who just happens to not be a thrill-seeking kind of person like when just annoying Gus kind of just there but Alex felt like a fully formed person that was another part of this relationship and I liked that so I don't know if that is why I liked this relationship a little bit more than the others I will be interested to see how like that plays out in funny people like will the male main character also just be boring I don't know to be foreseen to be to be there's a word I'm looking for it words are escaping me right now it's it's not here also I don't remember if I told you but like I tapped it and all of these little blue tabs are all the mentions where she talks about like size difference and how like Poppy is just so itty bitty and Alex is this big brave hulking man and we get to the very end the very end and my last tab in here a fucking blue tab we couldn't just end on a good note she just goes you're just searching for any word that could possibly encompass what I'm feeling so tall do we need that I don't I don't think we did but here it is on the last page we could have gotten through this without one more blue tab but we did and while it sounds like I'm complaining I really did have an excellent time I love Poppy and Alex as friends I love them um, just together I love I just love their overall dynamic how they come together fantastic time fantastic time I'm I'm really, really glad that I read this one. I'm going to take a little break, read some other things, pop back in, start funny story, um, which I know is fake dating. I love fake dating. I'm going to go in with like, not low expectations because the bar is set a little bit. You know, it's like mid expectations. I hope that turns out well. But that's where we are. Just riding off the high of people we meet on vacation. And I love that for me. me again it's me all the time because it's just me any who's it's I'm out here sunroom I thought it was gonna be a nice enough day to like sit out here read a little bit but it's actually very hot out here because um, it's a warmer day and I did not expect it to be this toasty in here so we're gonna do this update, we're gonna do it quickly. Blair's outside playing, so when he gets tired of running around on the outside, I will head on back indoors where it's nice and cool. Anyway, I wanted to give you guys an update on Funny Story. I started reading it, even though I was like, oh, I'm gonna give myself a little palate cleanser. And technically, technically I did because I read Bloom by Delal Delala. <laughs> by Delilah S. Dawson. Super quick read. I I don't know how I feel about it. I'm pretty sure I will talk about this in a wrap up because this has nothing to do with what I'm reading for this. But Bloom was definitely a palate cleanser of sorts. Completely different from anything Emily Henry has going on. Very 
disturbing, entertaining, nauseating for sure. I was gonna say, did I have a good time? I'm unclear, unclear for sure. <laughs> I don't know how to describe this book and I'm glad that I'm gonna have a minute before I do a wrap up so that I can figure out how to describe this and my feelings around it because so much happened in such a short amount of time that I just, what did I even read? Funny story. I started this. I'm not super far into this at all. I'm just starting chapter nine, which is about 84 something pages in. And so this is what I've deduced, which is what you can deduce from reading the synopsis. We've got Daphne and Miles. They've both been jilted by their exes who are pieces of scum because their exes were like childhood best friends. And then on the night of Daphne's fiance's bachelor party his best friend is there um and they decide that they actually love each other so Daphne's fiance gives her a week to move out of his house and Daphne's like what the fuck am I supposed to do so she goes to live with Miles Miles is the boyfriend of Peter's now fiance um I don't even remember Petra that's her name Petra Peter and Petra how could I forget scum of the earth Miles is also boohooing because he just got dumped by Petra. Daphne got dumped by Peter. Daphne moves in with Miles and they are coexisting at this point <laughs> until they get RSVPs for Peter and Petra's wedding, which, wow, that's very fast. And <laughs> it's happening like in a few months and they are just like, wow, look at them just stomping on our hearts like this so in a drunken haze that they have they so wouldn't it be funny if we rsvp yes to this wedding because they're not expecting it because they're probably like let's just throw them a pity invite you know why would they show up after being humiliated by us when we dump them but jokes on petra and peter because daphne and miles are like you know what we are gonna go to this uh wedding and then the following day peter calls daphne and he's like hey girl i think you may be mistakenly rsvp'd yes we sent you an invitation but like you don't really have to go if you don't want to because she'd be so alone and then daphne all of a sudden makes this up and is like oh i'm not gonna be alone i have a date and peter's like oh who because it would be beyond the realm of impossibility for Daphne to be dating someone new. Um, and she's like, oh, me and Miles are now dating. And Peter is very skeptical and taken aback at the same time. And so they're just like, yep, see you in a few months for the wedding. Can't wait to have fun with you guys. And so now Miles is like, yep, I'm with this. I want to do this. Let's go to this wedding pretend we're a couple, make them feel bad for making us feel bad and be in these terrible situations, and let's do this, mostly. So now we're just kind of like, Daphne and Miles are actually starting to get to know each other. Like she had no idea what he did for a living or where he worked. She finds out that he works at a winery. Daphne also realizes that in her relationship with Peter, she had really just inserted herself into his life. She had just become his plus one for everything. When they moved to, I wanna say they live in Michigan, Minnesota. It's an M state. Yes, the book, it tells me it's Michigan. So when they moved to Mig Minigan, why can't I talk today? When they moved to Michigan, Daphne um, and Peter are engaged at this point and Daphne doesn't really have friends here but Peter has a ton of friends here and so she's really inserted herself into Peter's life and her friends are his friends but now that they've broken up her friends are no friends because she doesn't have any and so she's realizing like what was she doing with all of this time except being an extension of Peter like whatever Peter wanted to make or eat that's what they ate Peter only drank beer so Daphne would drink beer Peter was a gym person. Daphne's a gym person. Um, and she like finds these reasons for it. Like it was just easier this way or I didn't really have a strong opinion one way or the other. So we just went with what Peter went. She's just like, and now look at me. Lonely, no friends, no man. 
Daphne is a children's librarian and she is not friends with any of her co-workers. She barely talks to them because she's just like, I can't get into small talk because I just find it so meaningless. Because when I get into small talk, it's like, what's the point of throwing in these small nothing conversations when these people aren't even going to be a part of your life very long? And I'm just like, how? Okay. I don't love small talk, to be honest, but like every once in a while you've got to talk to people otherwise you just seem very standoffish like you don't want to be bothered i will say that i am mildly enjoying this so far of all the beginnings of the emily henry books i've read this is the one i'm least having a good time with and i love fake dating i love this idea of them fake dating and getting revenge by saying that they're together um and then showing up to the wedding but one, this is where things take a turn. Daphne is very boring to me. She's just like, she has no personality, which may be the reason why she has no friends. And Miles, on the other hand, has all this personality. He's got personality for days. He's funny. He's outgoing. He has a personality, which is not just, oh, I'm boring and I no one likes me, which is oddly enough kind of Daphne. Although Daphne is not like, oh, I'm boring and nobody likes me. Daphne is just boring. <laughs> I'm hoping that things get better as Daphne develops a relationship with this woman at her job. And you know, you can tell that they're gonna have some kind of a friendship. I don't know what this friendship looks like. I think maybe Daphne could come out of her shell more and develop more of a personality. I am gonna go inside so that my brain stops baking a little bit and maybe I'll read. So let's see if I read some more and I'll come back when I have an update. I'm back out here. What are you eating? We're just gonna assume that it's something not terrible. Anyway, I'm back out here. It's cooled down, it's later in the day. Any who's it? Let me, let me set you down. Got maybe like a little, 60-ish pages, 60 more pages read. I am now invested in Miles and Daphne. Daphne still has no personality, but together they are cute. They are cute. There's always side stories in Emily Henry's stories. And there's like familial things happening with both of them that I just resonate with. Like um, Daphne is used to being her mom's number one priority and like she's trying to make it a point of not being so that her mom can live her life because she spent her whole life um, providing for Daphne. And then I don't really know what um, Miles' story is, but I do know that he has like a weird relationship with his family, but he's close with his sister. And like there's this one part where they're talking about um, Peter Daphne's ex and how his family like they're really close and they have all these traditions and she just wanted to be a part of something a part of something like that and I was like yeah you may not necessarily want to be with that person but like there's just a closeness when families have like these traditions and these things that they always do and you can tell that they genuinely care for each other and you're just like oh I, I want that I would like to have that in my own family or establish that in a family and it's just like, I get it, Daphne. Also, I think that she's coming out of her shell a little bit more. She and Miles have started going on these Sunday dates so that she can be better acquainted with Michigan because up to this point, she's only lived in Peter's little bubble and Peter's bubble did not extend very far with her. I wish that she would find some more friends, get a hobby or something, um, but maybe, maybe it'll happen. Maybe it's gonna happen soon. They've had a moment together and I was like, okay, I see you guys. I like it. Now I'm having a better time than I was. I'm probably going to let Blair play outside a little bit more, figure out what it is he's eating because it looks very suspicious and it looks like it has um, a vet bill on it. So I'm gonna go um, wrestle this from his mouth head back in the house and get ready to get into bed even though i know it looks like it's light outside it's almost eight o'clock and by the time i like wipe down the kitchen do all the things it'll be dark i swear i don't just go get in bed when it's light outside that is a lie i 
straight up lied to you just now. I sometimes, it's sometimes light outside and I like to be in bed, okay? Sometimes seven o'clock is the right time for bedtime. You know what I mean? Whatever time the spirit moves me to be in the bed, that's bedtime. Anywho, I'm gonna go get in bed, read a little bit more. I think I can maybe finish this tomorrow. Oh my God, Blair, gotta go. Good morning. Can you imagine if I filmed everything from this angle? This is terrible. Anyway, here we are. Good morning. I'm wearing my Sunday fun day shirt. Is it Sunday? No. But is today gonna be a fun day? Yes, because my friend is coming over. We're gonna work from my house today. I mean, I work from my house every day, but she's gonna come over. We're gonna work. We're just just gonna hang out and occasionally send emails. My plan is to finish Funny Story today. I only have like 160-ish pages and I feel like I could do that. And where I am, I feel like it could just go by so fast. At this point, I'm just like, you know they're gonna get together. Just get, just get together. Be together, guys. Be together. Um, after she's done so much, um, but yeah. Again, another relationship where I know where this is going, but I'm not like super invested in them as a couple. Them as friends, I could see it. I, I would be like, you know what, this is this is great. But them as a couple, it's just like, yeah, this is cool. Miles' sister has entered the chat. And boy, is she annoying. I cannot stand in my real life a flighty just super spontaneous person not because they the spontaneity is annoying but like when they decide to do something then they just ruin your kind of daily schedule with no kind of like consideration for what you've got going on so like his sister just comes in it's like hey i'm here and so it's like yeah and i'm staying with you so now it's like i have to consider you and you just decided to pop up and you decided to stay for a little while. Also, even though that this is fake dating, I feel like it's not truly fake dating because they only fake date in front of Petra and Peter. And I want a fake dating where they're fake dating in front of everybody. Nobody knows that they're really not a couple. I just feel like that makes more fun because then you're trying to hide it from everybody. And then like people are like, oh, look at you guys, really a couple. I don't know. That's just me. It's just me. So that's what I've got going on. That's my little update for this morning. And I hope to update a little bit later with my closing thoughts on this book because I'm going to be done. That's my plan. I'm going to be done. I did it. I finished. I don't know quite where I'm landing with this because you know that feeling when you finish, um, especially romance, and the happily ever after happens and you're just like yes exactly of course this is what we were leading up to so you just had this big euphoric feeling and so you're just like five stars but like is this five stars it's definitely not <laughs> don't get me wrong is it a four maybe is it a 3.5 maybe is it a 4.25? Who knows? I got it. I think I need to sleep on it. But I will say I finished it. I loved where we took this. Um, I especially loved the character development for Daphne. In the beginning, she was giving me super boring, no personality, nothing. And by the end, she had developed a sort of personality. She went outside of her comfort zone to to be different than what she had been doing what she had been doing for most of her life um by just fitting in or fitting into a slot that somebody had opened and honestly i feel like i related to daphne not in the way of like fitting into a slot although i probably have done that in my lifetime but with her parents i definitely saw myself with Daphne. Um, for Miles' progression, I still say that Miles is my favorite Emily Henry boyfriend. Um, and his progression, there, I don't know that there was much for me. Um, he had a personality from the beginning and um, 
you know, he was just this big teddy bear that you, that everyone loves and he continued to be that way throughout and yes you saw some of the struggles that he was going through especially internally trying to feel like whether he was worthy whether um he was good enough but uh, it just didn't feel like growth for me or enough growth for me so i mean miles just stayed consistent he was who he was at the beginning of this he was who he was at the end but I, I like it. So yeah, I, I had a really good time with this. I think in the morning I will have more coherent thoughts, but I'm glad that I did pick up Funny Story because was it a funny story? No. And that's what I'm learning. I don't know why these books are titled the way that they are because it's all very misleading. Funny Story, you know, I could say that because when you're about to tell something that's not funny and you just go funny story so that i get beach read it's not it's not a beach read it's not at all people we meet on vacation they meet people on vacation but it's not about those people that you meet on vacation um what was the other one people we meet on vacation beach read and happy place uh it was a semi-happy place <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like it's it's all misleading. You think you're going to get this happy, bubbly, little, quick, easy, summery read. And then it's like everything happening here. <laughs> the title led you astray. And I mean, is the like cute little summery thing in there? Yeah. But there's also this other thing that threw you for a loop. I will have thoughts. Better thoughts in the morning. I feel like I start all things with, hey, hello, good morning. Um, but it's not morning, but hey, hello. I'm in my car again. <laughs> I'm here a lot. But um, I'm on my way to pick up my friend so that we can go get pedicures because tomorrow we are going to this DC Derby party um, for her birthday. So I'm treating her to pedicures for her birthday and so I'm in the car again time is stupid where did the time go I don't know it doesn't exist it's not real so now I'm on my way to my friend's house rushing so I can make my three o'clock appointment and I just don't think that's fair also something that's not my fault there was like traffic everywhere it's two o'clock in the afternoon it's a Friday yes but why are y'all all out in the street i mean i know i'm out in the street but why are you guys here thank you for letting me get that off my chest um so yeah just here trying to beat time i guess i'm gonna get a pedicure and be relaxed and enjoy my time with my friend and then when i come back I'm gonna start reading. And I know you're thinking, but the vlog is over, except that it's not because I was convinced by Ray and Jess, you have them to thank for this. They were like, well, you read all the other Emily Henry. You might as well read Book Lovers. And so <laughs> I'm gonna read Book Lovers. Why not throw another book into the mix and just read all of them? And then I would have a comprehensive ranking of Emily Henry's adult contemporary romances that's what we're doing i'm gonna so i'm gonna go do this i'm gonna come home i'm gonna read a little bit and then <laughs> that's what we're doing we're gonna keep this emily henry train rolling you guys can come for the ride remember where I last left you in fact I think I said that I was gonna go get pedicures with my bestie 
her birthday because we were going to go to a derby party the next day. But when I got home from the pedicure, I was going to start reading Book Lovers. And I just want y'all to know that if I ever tell you when I get home from somewhere, I'm going to start reading something, I'm probably lying to you. I'm so sorry in advance. It's just, it's not going <laughs> to it's not gonna happen. It has been days. It's Sunday. I went to get pedicures on Friday. Anyway, I have been reading. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This book lover is not loving this book. I'm not. I'm like 90-ish pages in. So I stopped right at chapter seven. This is what we've got so far. We've got two sisters. Nora is a literary agent. Libby is a free spirit out here living life, raising kids. She has a husband, <laughs> but she has two kids and she is pregnant with her third and they live in New York. When we first started the book, I was really interested because Nora described herself as like the villain in Hallmark movies. She's that girlfriend, that big city girlfriend that's like, you would never move to this small town and do these stupid small town things because we're city folk. And Nora's like, yep, I'm that person. I'm the person that likes expensive things, that likes fancy and practical shoes, who loves my job and likes to work hard. And I'm the person who gets dumped every time for that small town girl. When she's talking about like her past boyfriends and how she just got dumped by one, I'm just like, I am rooting for you, Nora, because the Hallmark girlfriend villain, villainess, deserves to have a happy ending and I want you to get your happy ending but as we continue on we meet the potential love interest Charlie he is an editor and so she's trying to pitch this book that he's like I think this book isn't the author's best work but if you got something else let me know and he's kind of aloof and off-putting when they first meet and she's like "Ugh, I hate this guy and also I think on the back it says something about rivals and I just like to say that nowhere in here are they rivals they are just two people who met for a professional meeting and it didn't go off well they never have interactions again until we pick things up like either a couple of years later I think and the author's book is a success and it's set in a place called Sunshine Falls, North Carolina. And um, Charlie's like, no place could ever be so idyllic as what the author has put in this book. And Nora is like, yeah, it can. Libby, Nora's sister, is like, hey, let's take a trip to Sunshine Falls. It can be a sister trip later on. My family, the girls, husband, they can come visit us. But I just want to have a sister trip with my sister. Nora feels like something is a little off. Um, and she's just like, is it because her sister and her husband are having money troubles? Is something wrong with like the baby? Is something wrong with the kids? Like what's happening? Because she feels like she knows her sister. She's always trying to take care of her sister. And I kind of am at the point where I'm like, relax. Let your sister be an adult. Okay, stop trying to take care of whatever it is. Also, you don't even know what it is that's bothering your sister. And instead of just trying to ask your sister what's wrong, you're like, let me figure out what's wrong and then fix it. But how can you fix it if you don't know what's wrong? Also, don't mind the foil. I'm taking nails, polish, and stuff off. Anyway, they finally get to Sunshine Falls and they get to the cabin that they're staying in and they're going to town. They find out the town is not as cute as they thought it would be. And so Nora's trying to make the best of it for Libby. And who does she run into, into t in town? Charlie. And she's like, Charlie, why are you here? I'm supposed to be having the best time of my life with my sister and you're here. And Charlie's like, surprise, I'm from here. And um, he also is working at the local bookstore. My camera's gonna die, but I just wanna let you know, not having a good time so far. It sounds like a good setup for a good time. It's not, it's not. Okay. 
So I've been reading. And I just want to know why Sunshine Falls is such a shitty place. I, I understand it's a small town. I get it. But like, why is there nothing good? They've got like a coffee shop. Really cute. Mug and shot. I, I love the name of that. But everywhere else in this town sounds terrible. The bookstore where we find out that Charlie's working because it's owned by his family. The bookstore is just like in disarray. Also, it's the only place with Wi-Fi in the whole town. Not even the coffee shop has Wi-Fi. Like, what? And then there's um, Papa Squat. I think that name of for a restaurant bar is hilarious it just makes me laugh every time they talk about it but it also sounds like a shitty little restaurant dive bar and i'm sure the residents of sunshine falls really love it there and i love that for them but the author dusty who like wrote a romance about it she really oversold this place like heavily because yeah i would hate to be here for a month, like as my vacation spot. But I mean, I love it for for these people who are here and enjoying it. Okay, I'm at a part where they are at a town meeting. The characters in this little town, this shitty little town, they are funny. And it's a very punny town. I don't know if it's like they set out to be intentionally punny when they established this town back who knows when? It's a fictional town. And so <laughs> they're fighting over the name of the coffee shot, which I told you was Mug and Shot. And so they're like, oh, you weren't happy with Bean to be wild or some like it hot. Guys, like it's practically pornographic. <laughs> I don't know why that's, that is so funny to me. I love these little towns people, not the town. Again, I would hate to be here for a whole summer. But these townspeople, they're hoot. They are a hoot. I'm having a grand old time with the townspeople. I think that this book would benefit from dual perspectives. Um, because I think just being only in Nora's head, it lacks a little something. Because Nora is clearly very horny for Charlie. It's implied that Charlie um, is also horny for Nora but I think it would be also nice to be in his head a little bit. Also just know what he's thinking about not just Nora, but the other townspeople, the th things that are happening in the town, what he thinks about Libby. Um, I think it just would benefit to have the other perspective. Also Libby, Nora, getting on my nerves. Like, please, you guys, just have a conversation instead of storming away because you're mad somebody asked you what's wrong. You're adults. Use your words. I'm going to do a little bit more reading of this and then hopefully finish this up tonight or tomorrow morning. I think I could. I have finished this. I didn't just finish this just now. Um, <laughs> I finished this yesterday and then I sat on and thought about it and then I went out and here I am to tell you about this and to give you my definitive ranking once I'm done. These are my feelings on book lovers. Did I hate this? No. And I will say that I liked this more towards the end than I did in the beginning because certain things started to flush itself out. Nora and Libby finally talk about some things. I thought I would see more growth in Libby and Nora actually, but I, I kind of didn't. But I will say that I'm glad Libby finally became an adult. It was every time they had an interaction, Libby felt childish and that she was always in this perpetual state of like being a 16 year old girl or younger. And it was just like, girl, you are an adult with two and a half kids and a husband. Like get it together, please. You find out why they're really on this trip, what's really happening with Libby. Um, and Nora's like, well, I could have fixed all of this. And it's just like, no, you couldn't have. And you shouldn't have because again, Libby is an adult. Nora is an adult. Everyone can fix their own problems here. And it was just driving me crazy. And um, we finally find out like why Nora has these kind of detachment issues where she doesn't really want to get attached to other people um 
men specifically and be in relationships. <sighs> Again, everything that was going on with her and Charlie and what was happening with Charlie, I just feel like it could have been easily solved and that there were solutions other than the ones that they were choosing for themselves. Towards the end of this, I started to feel like I had more of a connection with what was going on with Nora um, and how she felt. And I, there was like one thing that just really made me think like, um, how no two siblings ever have the same parent, how you can grow up in the same household and experience the same things and see them completely different. So while like Nora was, yeah, our mom was great and New York is fantastic and we just had this grand old time growing up, Libby's just like, I didn't see it that way. Um, yeah, our mom is great, but like, there were things that you did that you shouldn't have had to do. Um, mom didn't always treat us as her children as her number one priority and she left some of the responsibility to you girl and like hey that's okay one thing i was like screaming in my head the whole time was like nora please go to therapy i do like how this ended i think that it made sense for the characters this made sense and how everything came about it was cute i liked it and so now Let's get into my definitive ranking of Emily Henry. Well, of Emily Henry's contemporary romances. After sitting on things, thinking about it, letting it marinate, I have my definitive ranking. And whatever I, whatever rating I gave any of these books earlier on may not be the same because I've had time to like actually sit and think instead of just giving you a rating as soon as I was finished with it. At the bottom, but not like the worst thing ever, is going to be Book Lovers at three and a half stars. I just, I really could not stand Nora and Libby together. I just, it wasn't working for me. And I really wanted to root for this because I loved the beginning overall and how Nora was kind of like the villainess of Hallmark movies. And it just, it didn't pan out how I thought it would. I don't know, maybe it's also like the small town setting. Like I love a small town setting in a Hallmark movie and a Lifetime movie just because like it's super cheesy and stupid but like and you know how it's gonna end because the main protagonist is always gonna end up with like the baker after the Christmas tree spectacular spectacular and that's how it's gonna be. For some reason when I read it in books it just doesn't translate the same for me. So three and a half this is the bottom but again not terrible. And then I'm gonna have happy place at 3.75 stars one i did not care about their relationship at all not not a single ounce of me cared mostly cared about the relationship between harriet and her friends um and what they had going on and even though they could have just had a conversation about things not working in their friendship group they didn't and that was frustrating for me um but like when and harriet didn't care not didn't care at all also i think i listened to this on audio and i think it would have been better had i not number three midway we're gonna go with funny story and while i did have a really good time with this this i'm giving this a 3.75 stars um i really enjoyed daphne and um miles their relationship i liked the overall story of them both being dumped by their significant others who ended up getting together and then that's how these two came into contact in the first place but what i did not like was that daphne's mission was to get her own life what she did and to make some friends and like she made one friend and i feel like she could have made more miles didn't feel like there was a lot of growth for him, which is fine. Again, it's it's the middle of the ground here. Number two, I'm gonna go with Beach Read. This was my first Emily Henry that I ever read, and it's the one that made me interested in even wanting to continue on with anything else that she wrote. So of course it had to <laughs> be up at the top somewhere. And so I, again don't really care about their relationship so i don't really remember too much about like the circumstances that they had going on with their families i do remember that i enjoyed the exploration of grief 
from January, how she was processing grief and just trying to figure out, you know, who the person was that was her dad. Um, she, this person she thought that she knew but didn't and then like things come out about her parents and she's just trying to process all of this while on top dealing with the grief that is losing a parent. And then um, I think Gus is dealing with like the grief of a failed relationship. I don't remember too much about Gus. He is not very memorable to me. And then number one for me, it's going to be people we meet on vacation. I don't know what it was about Alex and Poppy, but they really did it for me. I was just so happy to see them when they were interacting at the height of their friendship, even as they grew into friendship, and even as they were trying to reconnect after being apart for so long. I liked the friendship here because it just mimics so many friendships that I know of where people are just growing and they're changing and how do you maintain a friendship which was just fun and lighthearted when you were in college but you know you start to get real world responsibilities and schedules change and just things like that happen and how do you maintain those friendships. I like seeing that play out in here as well as like this friends to lovers situation. This is my definitive Emily Henry ranking. Now, this is not my definitive Emily Henry boyfriend <laughs> ranking. Hold on, let me, let me turn this around. Win, least favorite. I don't like, I don't like Win. Win was so boring that I think I would have had a better time talking, talking to wallpaper that's drying than talking to Wynn. So after when it would be Gus from Beach Read, which I know is interesting because Gus is in my, my second favorite book. When I tell you, I don't remember, I mean, I do remember things about Gus, um, but like, I didn't care. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I did not care about Gus whatsoever. And he's only above Win because he just has a little bit more personality. And then after Gus, I have Charlie from Book Lovers because Charlie was funny. He was witty and he made sense and he was in there for all the right reasons. You know, he was having family drama, but it was mostly because like he just wanted to help. Number two goes to Alex because yes, is Alex born? You could say that Alex is a win. You could say that. But I think that Alex is boring just because he, that's just who he is. Like he likes the routine of things. He likes to be on the schedule. He's just a regular normal dude. Whereas Wynn might actually be Eeyore. I'm not sure, I'm clear. Um, even Eeyore seems like he might be a, a better time. At least he says funny things. Number one is gonna go to Miles from Funny Story because Miles was funny. He had his own life. He had shit mostly together. Um, he had friends and he just seemed like a fully fleshed person that I would hang out with. And those are my book boyfriend ratings. This stack of books is heavy as shit and I'm putting it down. I really had a very good time reading all of Emily Henry. I wasn't sure how I would feel, especially after I threw book lovers into the mix because it was just like, why not? We gotta, might as well round it out and finish it all out here. But I'm really glad that I read it. I think that Emily Henry might be an auto buy author for me. Whatever she's putting down, I'm gonna pick up. Good, bad, or ugly, as we have seen with the book lovers. I'm not totally not interested in the romances that happen. I do think that they're very cute. I do like them coming together. It's just never the main focus for me. I do like what Emily Henry does with people's familial relationships and the things that they have going on in their life. I, th I think she does a great job depicting quote unquote not normal families and just showing like people's lives are messy. Families are messy. People have different relationships with parents. Every book though I feel like has one shitty ass dad. <laughs> There's at least one and well 
and that's what I have for you. What is your, if you've read most, any, all, what's your ranking of Emily Henry? Do you like her? Do you not? What's your favorite book boyfriend from Emily Henry? Um, if it's when, I need you to explain to me why. Thanks for joining me on this long, long journey. And until next time. Bye.